So, tonight I don't have a lot of confidence at all. Um, I'm fairly certain uh, the team is going to find a way. They're going to find a way to screw it up. That's what they normally do. All right, I don't trust them. When it's, when it's time to make the right decisions, I'm just, I'm pretty well sick and tired of it. We know that they're going to blow it. So, it is what it is. The NFL draft is tonight. We're hanging in overtime! We're hanging in Panther fans, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We're doing this thing again. This is uh, the third playoff series in a row, obviously not counting the um, Stanley Cup final, but this is the third Eastern Conference playoff series in a row that we've started off with a 2-0 lead. Last two times, you know, you kind of go into that third game going, please, please, and then the next thing you know, there we are with the 3-0 lead. Of course, that was when we were on the road to start the series, and now we've been at home to start the series. So this is going to be a completely different animal. Now, we got Bubba. We'll just, we'll just give Bubba some good juju. Hands off, okay? Don't touch the goalie before the game. And um, unfortunately for us, the Lightning are not going to take a page from the Bruins, and they are going to stick with Vasilevsky, even though he's lost to, instead of going to Johansson. I don't understand why they won't put it. <laughs> I tried to say it with a straight face. <laughs> Come on, guys. I mean, give him a chance. You never know. So, um, what do we got to do tonight? Well, we know the whole Sam Bennett thing. So, we're Barkoff, Lundell, Stenlin, Lorenz. To be honest with you, the thing I'm far more concerned about, and I hope that this is one of those things that I continue to bitch and complain about that goes the opposite way. Kyle Ocpozo draws in because Ryan Lomberg is literally quarantined from the team because whatever he got, they want to make sure nobody else has. So, Ocpozo draws in on that fourth line, which is now Lorenz Ocpozo with Cousins. Now, uh, for those of you who don't normally watch this channel, my gripe with Ocpozo is that once he's in the zone, he's, he's pretty good. He's good at handling the puck. He's good at saving the puck from leaving the zone. He makes some nice passes. I have zero complaints about Ocpozo once they're in the zone. The problem is, is that he's on average two to three full strides behind everybody else before he gets into the zone, which is kind of not how it works for the Panthers and how we do things. So he draws in tonight. Now we can look at this a number of ways. When Akpozo came here, I'm sure they all but promised him that, hey, we'll get you into at least one game in the playoffs because he needs to be in a game to be able to get his name on the cup. So this satisfies that. And also it's good to keep... Lomberg away from everybody. Now, the question, I got it itchy. Um, I know that we all would probably rather have Gadjevich on the ice except for instead of Ocpozo, but like I said, maybe this is, you know, Maurice has kind of had it in his mind that at some point you kind of got to get Ocpozo at least into one game, and he's going to take this opportunity to do it. And I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with it. You're going to want to get Gadjevich in for a game as well. So maybe if Lomberg's not ready to go Saturday, Akpozo out, Gadjevich in. Other than that, what we're going to need is what we did on the ice after Sam Bennett got hurt. We have played without Bennett before. We know that that line is not going to be as maniacal and physical and all of that. But Lundell has his positive traits as well, as you saw on his pass to Verhage in overtime. Now, I haven't checked to see if there's any lineup changes for Tampa. What I'm uh, interested to see 
is now that they've had a day and a half to prepare for what our lineup will be, if they make any matchup changes. Remember now they have the they have the last change being at home. So I'd be curious to see, because um, they were having trouble with the Lundell, Lucerne, and Rodriguez line. Now that's not a thing right now. Stenlin's a nice player, but we'll see. What we need, what I'd like to see, is I need one of my guys. We need either Kachuk, Tarasenko, Montour, right? One of the big guys. One of the big guns. I'm not calling out for Barkov because I just want Barkov to do Barkov things. I don't want him to change his game. But one of the other guys is going to need to attempt to make up the energy vacuum uh, that is there. Yeah. Make up for the lack of Sam Bennett. That's what I'm trying to say. Lundell is going to play his game, and that's that's fine. We can win that way. But that extra burst of energy, that extra hookspa, as you might say, um, that comes with that line with Sam Bennett, I think maybe Kachuk or Tarasenko. We remember back in the regular season when Verhage left and Tarasenko was here, and he came out of bad out. You know, he um came on like a bat out of hell in the third period of that game. So that's what I want to see. Other than that, just just keep playing the way we've been. Just keep playing our game, right? we got to get the goaltending. we got to stay out of the box. We've been doing a good job. It's going to be a different animal. Tampa's going to come out, I'm assuming. Now, I said this last game, so I'm, I'm waiting for that first 10 minutes of the game where Tampa dominates and maybe even gets a lead. Didn't materialize last game. Now they're at home. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen tonight. Biggest last thing I'll say, the biggest difference in the world between 2-1 and 3-0. Okay, at 3-0, you could lose Saturday, go home, and win the series at home in Game 5. If you lose tonight, if the Panthers lose tonight, all of a sudden Tampa can get out of Dodge and tie the series on Saturday, and then we'll be down to a best of three. Just do what we did last year. Yeah, that's it. That's the last thing. Just do what we did last year, Panthers, until the end. But in the, you know, you know what I mean. All right, so it's one nothing Panthers after one. Real quick, I was mistaken on Ocpozo. Um, He doesn't need to play in a playoff game to get his name on a cup. Long story is what that basically means is Maurice. Put an Ocposo over Gadjevich, which I'm not a fan of that decision. But what we have is a 1-0 lead for the Panthers. And unfortunately, we've drawn TJ Luxmore as the ref tonight, um, who has already called Montour for a ridiculously ticky-tacky penalty. And then he gets forcing for interference. And even the announcers are like, I don't agree with that call. So Tampa... Um, is in the middle of the third power play. We killed the first two. We've killed the second ones or the third one so far. They did a, they did get a goal, but it got called back for being offside. Um, hopefully, at some point, Luxmore decides to that that three to nothing is enough. Uh, you know, it's just I'm not a big bitch about the referees guy, but this is the only way Tampa is going to win right now because uh, five on five, the Panthers are pretty much dominating. Um, another gorgeous pass. Um, this one was for Hagee to Lundell. Lundell to Kachuk. It's in the back of the net. And that accounts for our one goal. Um, goalies look good. Everything looks pretty much the same. The only difference in that period, really, was the unusually high number of power plays uh, compared to uh, what the series so far has been getting. So... We're not big fans of Luxmore around here. I, I don't know about you Lightning fans. Do you guys have any issues with Luxmore? We, we tend to. This is how it goes for us every time Luxmore is on the ice. Move on to second period. See how this goes. So it is 3-2 Panthers after two. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So uh, Tampa comes out at the beginning of the second period. And just absolutely dominates for the first 8 to 10 minutes of the game, uh, period. And only because of Bubba Bruski was it not 3-1 or even worse. But he keeps it to 2-1. And then before you know it, Sam Reinhardt, Brandon Montour, and we've got the one goal lead again. And I'm going to tell you, that is not the Panthers' script. So I don't know what's going to happen in this third period. 
all year long, there's been two scripts. Either the Panthers win the game 4-2, to two, or we get a one or a two goal lead in the first period, blow it in the second period, win it late or win it in overtime. I don't remember the last time we went to the third period with a lead. I'm sure it's probably not been that long. But the point is, is that we're going to have to now survive another 8-10 to 10 minute period of Tampa Bay being, you know, balls to the wall. Because while going down 3 nothing is not an elimination, it is, uh, this is really, 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 really close to that, especially the way Bubba Brewski is playing. Um, the only thing here, of course, is we took another penalty. They get Forsling for tripping. So now um, that's four power plays for the Lightning. Uh, and imagine, amazingly, so far, uh, Tampa has played a completely perfect game. They have not done anything against the rules today. So congratulations to you. Mikola was not on the bench towards the end of the second period. Hopefully he's okay. But I have confidence on the guys on the ice. This is as big of a period as there is because this is the difference between 2-1 and 3-0. We've got a lead. Panthers, Goonie Google. Well, will you look at that? One, two, three, four, five, and it's three, three games to nothing. That is the third series in a row in which the Panthers got a 2-0 lead, and they they get Game Three. Holy crap, boy, that was that was tense. That was tense, right? Okay, we end up making it 4-2, and you knew you knew Tampa was not just gonna it wasn't just gonna go that easy. And they get they get the goal back 4-3, and pff, those last five minutes, my heart, my my intestines, my feet fell off. I mean, I lost all my toenails and fingernails. I went bald in those five minutes. It was crazy, but we end up with the empty netter. After Tarasenko almost had an empty netter, shot gets blocked, rebound, rebound goes right to Reinhardt, who misses the empty net from, like, the circle. Thanks, Reinhardt. So we had to go through another 30 or 40 seconds of heart palpitations before finally the puck gets to Chucky. He made no mistake. That's the second time he's got an empty netter. And uh, so we've got a 3-0 series lead. And uh, all of the replacements are the ones play, paying the bills. The replacements are paying the bills. Okay? Lundell had an assist. Akposal had an assist. Lorenz had a goal. You, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> and Akposal didn't get an assist on the Lorenz goal. But he was screening the goal. He was right there in the front. Like I said, once Akposo was in the zone, he's, he's good. It's just him getting into the zone. It's just, well, I'm not going to complain about it right now, although that's what I do. If you're new here, how it works is the more I complain about a guy, the better he plays. That's almost a guarantee for the eight seasons I've been doing this. So it's, it's not personal. It's, it's done for a purpose. It's done for a purpose, if you know what I'm saying. So, what did we see on the ice tonight? Um, the, the, the top line, doing good, right? Okay, nothing nothing spectacular, but just the defense. Tarasenko coming and back-checking and taking, deep, taking the puck and hitting people. We need to re-sign Tarasenko. Uh, the Lundell line looked fantastic out there. Lundell is just such a smart player, and now... When you get to see him in moments like this, you go, okay, that's why he's first-round draft pick. He's got talent. Remember, people, he's only 22, 23. I think he's still 22. He's a young guy. He's got a lot of developing to do. Um, the third line, the Stenlin line, did a really good job tonight. Rodriguez was very active in keeping the puck along the boards and buying time for other guys to get around and, and just – just doing a great job. And then the fourth line. I mean, we're getting depth scoring from this. Are you, are you kidding me, right? So, uh, defensively, Mikla came back, so we're good to go there. OEL had a really good game. Kulikov is playing well. Ekblad looks good. For, Forsley. Now, the dude in the last game was on one leg. And now it looks like there was never anything wrong with him. 
I got to, what does this guy do? What kind of condition is he in? It's just incredible. It doesn't matter. We've seen this in a regular season. The one time we thought the dude had broken his hand or what, what, what? He looked like he's in bad shape. He goes to the locker room. He comes back. And it's just like a new guy every time. He does not show the wear and tear from his injuries. So, and then on the Tampa side of things, um, if you watch my series preview, what I asked for is what's happening. We're skating them to death. There's no shame in that. The, Tampa, the, the, the Lightning have won their cups. They've got a veteran, older team. We do not, right? And we're skating them to death just like we should. We just keep skating and skating and skating. And while Tampa can keep up with us and even dominate in stretches, Bobrovsky, if he can keep us in the game during those stretches, eventually Tampa has to take their foot off the gas, and then we take back over, and you see what happens here. So, the series is not over. The series is not over. Um, I still feel like Tampa's going to put together a game of, like, full-on old Tampa Bay Lightning, and I would suspect, obviously, that would have to be game four. Now, I would like to win game four for obviously reasons, but um, the combination of winning game four and ending our series Saturday, plus maybe getting uh, Toronto and Boston to go to six, maybe even seven games, would give our guys like a week off. Now, I know there's the concern about we had too much time off last year before Vegas, but I don't really feel like that's what did it to us. And we have proven here in this series that we can go from playing like ass to turning it on. So considering Forsling had kind of got dinged and Lomberg has been six, sick and you give Bennett some time, right? Maybe if we, you know, maybe he could come back for game one. Um, and I'm sure, you know, like Mikula left the ice for a minute tonight. Ekblad left the ice for a minute tonight. So those are little dings. But if we can... If we can finish this off Saturday, those guys could have a week to heal. And considering it's still early, early in the playoffs, it's just the first round. I don't feel like I feel like that week would be more beneficial to us than harmful. So let's see if we can finish this on Saturday. And in terms of Tampa, I mean, Vasilevsky, look, I mean, he's doing everything he can, but Bob is one-upping him at this point. He's just making, Bob is just making some ridiculous saves. Not that Vasilevsky isn't, but we are getting, I mean, we outshot them again tonight. And in the reality, um, I haven't looked at the stats, but I would suppose that their save percentages are about the same. But Vasilevsky's just sh facing more shots, consistently facing more shots. And he's under a lot more pressure. He's having to work a lot harder. Um, Tampa is getting their chances, but they're not having long periods of extended uh, zone time for the most part, where the Panthers a few times tonight had Tampa hemmed in. In fact, I think the one last, I think it was the Lorenz goal, we had Tampa hemmed in for quite some time. They couldn't get off. They get tired. We're skating them to death. You get the idea of how it's going. So, But it's not over. It's 3-0. It's not 4-0. And last year, what I say every series you got, we've got this, but we need this, okay? And while there is only a couple of percent chance that Tampa comes back and wins this, it's not impossible. You have to finish it. It's like you have to finish the periods and somehow, some way, find a way to not suck in the first 10 minutes of the second period. Out of the 82 games the Panthers played in a regular season, I do not think that it's an over-exaggeration to say that they were terrible in the second period, in the beginning of the second period, at least at least 60 of those 82 times. I don't think that's an exaggeration. It might be, but not by much. I genuinely, that's how it feels. You guys can let me know, Panther fans, you let me know if that sounds about right. I really feel like at least two out of every three games, first 10 minutes of the second period, we were bad. And we've been bad the last two games. The first 10 minutes of the second period, and we keep winning. Oh, which, by the way, by the way, <laughs> four to zero in the power plant department. That would be four times we got called. 
Uh, the first one and the last one were legitimate. The two in the middle were just baloney. It was garbage calls. Okay? And Tampa, I you you did it. You did it. You played a perfect game tonight. You did not do anything that would, would warrant a penalty and give the Panthers a power play. Congratulations. Problem is, still lost. So, I don't know what more the refs could do. And I'm not saying that the refs were helping you out. But I think the two calls in the middle, there was... I mean, when the announcers on TBS are sticking up for the Panthers and saying that they thought the calls were weak, they must be pretty weak. I'll just, I'll just put it that way. So, all right. That's all I can do right now. That's, oh, oh, by the way, I wanted to show off. I've got some stuff to show off. I'm going to make a post tomorrow. But since they're standing right here... Uh, Rockin', Rockin' Ray has been a big, a big, good fan, good, good friend, big fan of the channel for a long time, since day one, basically. And he sent Kyle and I these two, these two mugs, these two Chorus Light beer mugs. Well, they're not mugs, they're beer glasses, but he used to call them mugs back in the day. But he sent these to us, and uh, over the summer, when we remake all of the rooms, now that Ellie has passed and there's no dog to get on the couch, um... I'm going to get myself, we're going to get us some like display cases because I've got a ton of stuff all over the place that you guys have sent me, but I don't really have enough room in this current setup to display it all. So I'm looking forward to summer because I've got a lot of stuff like that, that that's going to look good in cases and everything like that. Um, I just have to go to the furniture store and steal the cases. But other than that, well, it, sh it should be good. <laughs> all right, oh, Kyle and I will be live tomorrow at noon. Now, there are no, uh, the Panthers don't play tomorrow, Boston and Toronto do not play tomorrow. Um, there's a 50-50 chance that we'll take the night off tomorrow. There's a 50-50 chance that we will stream the Vancouver-Nashville game. I know that the Rangers and Capitals play, and I don't really know that I want to count on that game to be a good enough game to stream. So we'll see. It depends. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. But we'll see. Uh, you know, Kyle sometimes needs a night off. So we'll just see how that goes. But we will be live at noon. And uh, that's it, man. That's three games to nothing. I did not. I'm not saying I didn't think we could do it. But you guys know, you know, I'm, I, I wouldn't say I have a fear of the Lightning and Vasilevsky. Trauma. PTSD from what the Lightning have done to us in the past. And we're one game from returning the favor. Panthers, and the